Good afternoon, C News is live. I'm Karen Kozia Phillip. And I'm Nasira Mohammed with Sports. Well, the big news of the day, of course, is West Indies cricket, Nasira. Definitely, Karen. If you haven't heard by now, Phil Simmons was fired as the coach of the West Indies cricket team. And as I said, the hot topic in the past 12 hours has been the dismissal of West Indies coach Phil Simmons only five months into the job. The former Ireland head coach had endured a difficult time since taking charge in April last year and his sacking comes on the heels of the West Indies T20 victory at the World T20 Championships earlier this year. A year ago he was suspended and then reinstated following comments he made about team selection. According to a media statement issued last evening by the WICB, they announced they had parted company with the embattled coach. The 53-year-old former West Indies all-rounder who played 26 tests and 143 ODIs was appointed as West Indies coach in March 2015, following an eight-year spell as the Irish cricket coach. Rumours of Simmons' dismissal began surfacing last Saturday following the dismal tour of the West Indies against India in the Caribbean. The dismissal of Simmons comes just days ahead of the West Indies' two-month-long tour in the United Arab Emirates against Pakistan. The first match, a T20 game, takes place on the 23rd of September in Dubai. Joel Garner, Henderson Springer and Roddy Estrick will now lead the team when they face Pakistan in three T20s, three ODIs and three tests in the UAE. So that takes us now, who is in the frame to replace Mr. Simmons? And while it's only speculation so far, the names being bandied about are former West Indies players James Jimmy Adams, who is currently the coach of English county side Kent, the England-born Richard Pybus, who is also another name being touted as the head coach of the West Indies team, and he is currently the WICB's director of cricket and also a former Bangladesh and Pakistan coach. It's also been announced that the, the Bajan pair of Henderson Springer and Roddy Estwick will perform the coaching duties during this Pakistan series. And the former uh, West Indies captain Darren Sami has, you know, given his thoughts on the sacking of Simmons and has brought condemnations from high-profile players with the India Times reporting what Sami had to say. He lashed out against his country's cricket board in the immediate aftermath of the sacking, coming so close to the team series against Pakistan in the UAE. Sami, who was also dumped from the team before the historic two-match T20 series against India on American soil, criticized the move on social media saying, so after the publicity stunt in Fort Lauderdale, the first so-called plan to move West Indies cricket forward is to fire the coach just two days before a tour, just prove to me what I already knew. If the blind leads the blind, they are bound to fall in a pit, end quote. Under the guidance of Simmons, the West Indies had lifted their second World T20 title in India earlier this year. However, strains between Simmons and the WICB showed no signs of abating. Last year, as mentioned before, Simmons was briefly suspended after he complained of, quote, interference in the selection process, but he was reinstated after a reprimand. Now, as you can imagine, the sacking of Phil Simmons has been reported across the region. So now we're joined live by Mr. David George. He's a sports journalist in Antigua and Barbuda, where the WICB is based. Good afternoon, Mr. George. Hi, good afternoon to you and all your listeners. Just a slight correction, it's just simply Dave, Dave George, not David. <laughs> Fantastic. Sorry there, Mr. George. Now, tell us what's the reaction that you've been um, hearing in Antigua and Barbuda and from your other journalist counterparts throughout the Caribbean. Well, uh, as you can imagine, uh, you know, just uh, just here we go again. Um, it appears that in recent times, the, the Western Cricket Board has been making decisions that uh, that uh, that basically have stumped a lot of people. And uh, as you you said in your your preamble there, uh, recent successes by the Western Cricket Team, the most uh, most recent one with the T20 success in India, um, having um, gotten another championship in T20 cricket. And uh, that, would Im I would imagine, is, is a measure of success or some measure of success by which to, to, um, to judge someone's performance. So it, it, it's basically causing, uh, you know, various reactions. And um, the people, the, the Western cricket fans, they're, they're really fed up. I mean, you know, here we go again. That, that's just basically what is really going on with Western cricket and the decision makers. As a journalist based in Antigua and Barbuda, where the WICB is headquartered, 
Have you had a chance to talk to any members of the WICB, whether on record or off record? Uh, no, not 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 presently. Um, there's a popular radio show that that, that takes place here daily, weekdays, and uh, um, persons have been calling in and to give their various perspectives on what has happened. And again, it, you you made reference to Darren Sammy. Um, he's one of the casualties um, that that has suffered the 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 um, elimination as part of the elimination process, as, well, as we basically refer to it as, because. It, it appears that the, the, the Western Security Board is going to a series of, of individuals and eliminating them as they go along. Uh, Sir Kurt Liambos, he was dismissed as the bowling consultant just after, basically, literally, just after the, the, the success in India, having won that second T20 world title. And uh, here we go, uh, just the two one days in Fort Lauderdale, uh, Florida, just prior to that against India. They dismiss um, the more successful captain in recent times, um, bringing back some pride and joy to West Indies cricket, Darren Sammy. So it, it, it boggles the mind and begs the question, what is really happening in West Indies cricket? So we haven't really gotten a chance. I mean, that decision came through just yesterday. I really gotten a chance to, to get the feedback from the West Indies cricket world. But in the statement, what puzzles me really in the statement, even though it was brief, um, they, they're citing uh, cultural differences and strategic approach what really is that? Uh, I mean, I would imagine that if you're going to sack somebody, you look at their performance. That's the first thing. Because, you know, in the corporate world, if a, if a business fails, the first person that they go after is the manager because he's ultimately responsible for the business. So, okay, the West Indies cricket team has not been performing well in, West, in, in, in test cricket, uh, more so than any other form of the game. And you can even make an argument for one-day cricket. But by far, the best team in T20 cricket. So if you're going to dismiss somebody... Look at their performance. Mm -hmm. uh, granted that, that Phil Thank Simmons has had one, one victory in 14 test matches. Um, Thank you. But, yes, and, and he has what? He, he has had a, 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 at least seven major defeats, a mm -hmm. massive defeats uh, in test cricket. So if you're going to look to sack somebody, look at their performance. So if they came out and say, okay, well, sorry. Uh, Thank Simmons, you very you much. Performed well. Thank you very Sorry? much for joining. Thank you very much for joining us this, uh, this afternoon, Dave. Um, I'm sure we'll contact you back again as the story develops and as we get more information and more is brought to light regarding the WICB's um, plans for the future in terms of who they'll now choose to be a permanent head coach and in terms of the, the different developments in happening in West Indies cricket. Not a problem. Thanks so much for for asking me to do this. Not a problem. Anytime. Thank you very much. You're watching the C News Live report at noon. Remember, you can keep up to date with all the latest news on our website at ctvtt.com or you can check out our Facebook page and Twitter pages at C News Live. Joining me on set to take in reaction and to give his view on the sacking of his teammate is Philo Wallace. Mr. Wallace, good afternoon and welcome. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Now, you would have heard the news yesterday afternoon that you know Phil was sacked as the manager, as the coach of the West Indies team. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I received an email actually from you know the West Indies cricket board saying that they're separated from Phil Simmons. The WICB is separated from Phil Simmons, and it was a shock. I, I felt hurt. I felt like you know you've lost somebody close to you. I saw it happen to my good friend Otis Gibson, and now to Philip Simmons, and I think it is a dent in West Indies cricket. Where do we go forward, and particularly in that coaching area? which seems to be in dire straits and it's a sad detriment of what the board has done. You know, after bringing Phil Simmons here on a big train and saying, yes, this is a guy who's going to turn our cricket around, and then a year later, he's been booted out of a, a job, which to me, he seems he was enjoying. The statement by the WICB um, mentioned that there was a cultural and strategic difference between Phil Simmons and what the WICB had in, in mind and in plan for the development of cricket. Tell us, what are your thoughts on, on that statement? It's a strange statement, because when you look at differences in, in culture, Phil Simmons is from Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, he's been in Ireland, obviously coaching Ireland successfully uh, for a number of years, and he would have been accustomed, obviously, to the Irish system. But when you're coming home, you forget all of that, and you come home to something that you know, bred and born, uh, West Indian. And it's strange, that comment. Obviously, there's a little rift between him and the, the, the selectors and the director of cricket, you know, for comments that were made during a, after selection of a squad to go off to Sri Lanka, where he was uh, obviously banned from going. And then they were, that rift never was healed. And I thought that the board should have stepped in and healed that rift between 
Richard Pybus, who is a director of cricket at Phil Simmons, and that seemed to have festered. And uh, now they saw it as a, the perfect opportunity to, to sack him. And I think it is, it is not right for a guy who has done a wonderful job so far. He's been, you know, he's, we, 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 we saw improvements in, in our test match cricket, particularly. And we were hoping that, you know, he would go on to, to Pakistan and do really well and continue that work. And now we have to look for somebody new. Well, Roddy Essek and Hedy Springer, two Barbados, have been given the job to, to carry that squad to to Abu Dhabi, to the United Arab Emirates, and we're hoping that they can do good for us. But with the head coach, it's going to be difficult. We saw what happened in Sri Lanka when he wasn't there. And Jason Holder said when he was first appointed that he would miss him in that tour because he, he would have done a lot to work, and now all of that work has gone to note. Do you think it's a case of numbers against Phil Simmons? Because, I mean, there were talks that he faced oppositions from members of the West Indies Cricket Board itself, and one of them mentioned was Richard Pybus, as you said. His name has now been entered into the fray of possibly taking over as head coach of the team. Do you think that that would have had something to do with Phil Sacking? Uh, when you look at it, he has, the numbers didn't in his favor, weren't in his favor, but at the end of the day, he's, he's, he's young into the job. He's been given a three-year contract from what we've gathered, and to be released after a year, it, I think it's hard. Uh, when you look at the results, yes, the results weren't coming, particularly in our test match cricket. Yes, we won the T20 tournament, the, T20 championship twice under Darren Sammy and Phil was there to celebrate that and it looked good but at the end of the day the board seems to me to be looking to get our test match cricket up to par and that's where we're going to gain recognition and I think it's just a very hard deal by the board uh, to, to make such a harsh decision on the end of a, 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 an experienced captain again and a young squad. You mentioned that we're looking to get our test cricket back up to par it's been bandied about the comments that everybody's saying they know that West Indies is a T20 squad <laughs> and our test cricket has been left to falter by the roadside. Mm -hmm. Now that the WICB are trying to make headway back into the test arena and get our standards back up, do you think it's somewhat of a um, damn if you do, damn if you don't case? What if you listen to Phil Simmons' last interview again after the finals last match against India? He said that he wasn't getting things all his way. He wanted to meet with the franchise coaches at least twice, three times a year, and that the board seemed not to want that. And obviously, that directive would have had to come up from Richard Pryber's office as director of cricket. And, and we, we, you, from that statement, you re, you gotta look. Phil is uncomfortable. Uh, he, he, want, he's, he, he wants things, but he's not getting them. Obviously, he came here looking to better the franchise system, which is a big, which is very important for Test match cricket. And he felt that if he was going to get through to Test match cricket, being properly structured and the guys playing well, the franchise system was where it had to start. And unfortunately, that did not happen. And we, and, and what we are seeing here from the West Indies cricket board is again letting you know send a message to the public: look, we're in charge, and, and we do what we want to do, no questions asked. But I think that sometimes the stakeholders have to get up. And show the West Indies cricket board, look, that you have to answer to us. You just cannot dump people willy-nilly. I, I think it is really bad, and it's going to take our cricket backwards because we're going to hunt for a head coach, how long that is going to take, and then he has to come now and reignite a depleted side. Right. Fellow joining us this morning, uh, this afternoon on the phone line, is your colleague, uh, Omar Khan. Good afternoon, Mr. Khan, and welcome to Sea Sports. Hi, uh, good afternoon, good afternoon, and... Good afternoon to all Trinidad and Tobago. No, Mr. And Khan. My good friend, Fredo Wallace. How are you, fellow? <laughs> good afternoon. I'm fine. Tell us your thoughts on the sacking of Phil Simmons. Well, first of all, I must say that I'm terribly disappointed with the manner in which it was done. Because, I mean, we got reports coming out of the board meeting in Dominica over the weekend. And the president in a statement indicated that no decision was made with regards to the... Uh, sacking of Phil Simmons and that um, more discussion is going to be taking place or more consultation before a decision is made. And lo and behold, when Cricket Info, when Crick Info released the news yesterday, then the West WICB released a statement saying that Phil Simmons was sacked. You know, again, it begs the question as to the communication process and the board, how the board treats with its stakeholders and the people, you know, who love West Indies Cricket, who have a passion and care about West Indies Cricket. How do you feel about this now, you know, in the manner in which it was done? And again, I keep harping on the point, you know, and I've said this continuously over and over in all um, forums where I could get the opportunity to do so, that if we continue to operate in the way we do, and that relationship between the board and its players and its staff, management staff and coach, continues to be the, um, that big gap between the, the communication process and the way meaningful dialogue is not taking place, and no, there seems to be no process in terms of how things are done. There's no way I see our cricket improving, you know, even as you say, I have been listening earlier when you said that we are um, 
you know, touted as a T20 team. That may be fine, but at the end of the day, you know, you look at the teams today, the, the, all the, the world-ranking teams, you've got to be doing well in all formats of the game. Mr. Khan, do you think that the board directors themselves, because, I mean, there would be a vote for something like this before it happens, do you think the board directors themselves are being steamrolled by those on top, for example, the CEO, the director of cricket, etc., from the, the different territories are being steamrolled in their um, communication and in, in their opinions and say, okay, this is what the board goes with, so you disregard because we know that the, the, the various territories have all had individual opinions on the matters of West Indies cricket. Well, I have had the opportunity to talk to, to a couple of the directors, the Trinidad and Tobago representatives on the West Indies Cricket Board, and they have said that more meetings like this, they express their views and they will express you know, either the pros and cons or whether they support it or not. But at the end of the day, they have a collective responsibility in terms of not releasing information, confidential information that was taken, decision that was taken at the board meeting, you know, which is understandable. But at the end of the day, the responsibility of the CEO, the president, who whoever is given the mandate to make the official statements coming out of the board meeting. And if a decision was taken, which we are now hearing that a decision was taken in Dominica, two fires in Phil Simmons, that should have been communicated immediately. Because the decision was already taken. So why are you beating around the bush and telling people, well, look, you know, we still have more discussions to take place and more consultations to take place. And lo and behold, you already made a decision to fire Phil Simmons. Well, thank you for joining us this afternoon, Mr. Khan, and we'll contact you again as the story develops to get, you know, your input and when more information becomes available to us. Thank you. No well, problem. You're most welcome. Fellow, tell us, you know, quickly give us a final comment about, from you about this entire situation. I think it's a bad taste in West Indies cricket yet again. Uh, the board obviously has directed uh, the, the CEO to... to you know, announced to Phil Simmons that his, his services are no longer required. And he's going to put pressure on a new coach that is going to come in. He's going to always be thinking, when I will be fired, can I really settle in this job to do what I really want to do in, in, in relation to West Indies cricket and bring West Indies cricket back to the fore? That is test match cricket. And I think that the board will have to be very good in how they mend their ties going forward. And we are hoping that those who are going down to UAE, that they try to forget this as quickly as possible. I know they're human beings and they all have feelings, but try to forget this and move on with the cricket. West Indies cricket still has to go on, although it's a, it's a black day in our cricket yet again. To see one of our former cricketers aspiring to be an international coach has been sacked unceremoniously. Well, thank you very much for joining us on set this afternoon, fellow. Well, Nasira, not a dull day in West Indies cricket as usual. As per usual, and it will only get more interesting as the day and more information comes to light. Thanks, Nasira. Well, now on to other news of the day. Uh, frustration, that's what the parents of students attending the Fanny Village Government School say they're experiencing. One parent, Irvin Felix, explained why construction on their new school had to be halted. He says that the site where the children are now housed is not suitable. Mr. Felix believes that his taxes are not working for him or his children in the situation. Now, when seniors contacted the Ministry of Education, we were told that they need time to look into a report to give the media information. It's a village government school, right? And what went on Fanny village government school for some strange reason? Nine years now, I cannot finish building school, right? When you ask the problem about the school, them explaining that it's $28 million the outside. And they started building the school on Adam, which was a stupid thing to do in the first day. As far as we get to understand now, they wasn't even allowed to build the school there. So some bubble take place for this contractor pass here. Alright, that is beside the point. The original school came and burned down, so they moved to the community center. It began. And it began bad. My son last week, Tuesday, my son was in school. He get wet down. He just said, Sam God, she turned around and see him in time to dive and pull him. Because the water running close to the, the electricity. And well, they know how that would end up, right? So since then, we assembling by the school really wants a media coverage and point for them for the whole afternoon around the Bagels to see the kind of wickedness what's going on. Because it looking, it doesn't look political, then. it looking like it's game. Well, residents of Point Fortin are making an urgent call to the Insector Vector Division after locusts started invading their homes. The infestation of the red-winged insects began almost two weeks ago, destroying crops and greenery. Residents are now calling on the Agriculture Ministry to intervene immediately since they are dealing with the problems themselves and cannot cope with the hundreds of locusts plaguing the area. 
And are you one of those residents living in Point Fortin and affected by the locusts? Well, do let us know. Send us your photos or videos to our social media site on Facebook and Twitter at CNews Live. To some other sporting news now, the 2016 season ended on an extremely high note for Cleopatra Borel, whose efforts in Marseille, France, earned her the gold medal at the Deca Nation on Tuesday. The defending Pan American champion from Trinidad and Tobago had her best throw at 17.61 meters, which helped her to secure the top nod ahead of Chinese thrower Tian Quan Guo of China with 17.53 meters. In third place was Jessica Serival of France. Burrell also competed in the discus category at Deca Nation, where she placed sixth. Deca Nation will be the final competition for Cleopatra Burrell for the 2016 season. Double festivities on Tuesday evening as author and political scientist Selwyn Ryan celebrated his 80th birthday along with the launch of his latest book, Selected Writings on Race, Class and Gender in Trinidad and Tobago, The Struggle for Hegemony. Since his first publication in 1972, Professor Ryan has created a monumental name for himself, and he's considered to be one of the pioneers in sharing the political history of Trinidad and Tobago. Now his latest book follows the trend, giving an in-depth analysis on the ideologies of some of this country's key politicians. As one of his colleagues from the University of the West Indies puts it, he is the go-to man when it comes to anything related to TNT's political history. Having a newspaper of record, we mean that that is a newspaper in that particular nation which is considered to be the most important, the most reliable journal. In my view, Selwyn is the author of record for this nation's political history, this nation's modern political history. And before we go, just to let you know, social media has been buzzing with the news of the sacking of West Indies cricket coach Phil Simmons. One fan, Rai Torres, says the sacking will have a huge impact because the squad is very inexperienced and so it's a hard pill for the players to swallow. Torres went on to say that most of the players had a good relationship with Coach Simmons and now that he's gone, they will have a difficult tour without the real leader. And another fan, Otis Cabrales, says Phil Simmons should never have left Ireland to coach the West Indies and Vitus Butkun said Tino Bess would be appointed as a coach. Now here's a look at the weather forecast. The hurricane season continues with Tropical Storm Ian heading north through the Atlantic Ocean, posing no threat to land. There is, however, a trail of showers drifting into the Eastern Caribbean, so you may well hear some thunder over Tobago and Trinidad's northern range. Meanwhile, central and the southern Trinidad may see a scattering of showers as we go through this afternoon. Look for a steamy 33 degrees Celsius in Trinidad and 32 degrees Celsius in Tobago. For mariners heading out to look for east southeasterly winds of 10 to 50 knots with a slight to moderate chop of 1 to 1 and a half meters to the Caribbean and the Atlantic with east northeasterly swells of 9 seconds. Low tide at 8 a.m., followed by high tide at 2 before waters ebb at 8 this evening. That's the latest weather, and I'm meteorologist Dean Wallace. The news powered by a team of journalists and producers across the Republic and the region on television, radio and online. C News, your news, your country, our job.